same video on how to load a grid into GSR just because the way they've done it has changed a bit. You click on grid and image um, display on map um, grid and so I'm going to search on here for the South African magnetic grid which I have a million different versions for. Okay and over here I'm going to click uh, you can take off smoothing if you're not happy with it, but make sure it's shading is ticked. It's always good to add a color bar and click new map. And so here it's loading in a grid, but at the same time it's actually creating a map on that grid. Maybe I'll pause until everything's loaded. Okay, it didn't take too long. Click OK for map scale, and so it's now going to ask you about your color legend bar. So this is magnetic, so I'm going to put nanoteslas just for units, and I'm going to click on this locate button to choose where on my screen I want to put the color bar. I'm going to click over here, and it's now set the X and Y location. I always click down on more, and just, I don't know, I take usually take off um, decimal places, and Often you need bigger font size. I'm just going to make it four. I never know which one is important, so I just click on all of them. And I click OK, and you can see it's added, um, added in the color bar over there. I've just maximized my screen, and I now want to get to this map manager on the left-hand side. So I go here, I click on it, and then I pin it so that it stays open. I'm also going to click on the Earth button up here just to center my image. If I want to move around the scale bar, how you do that is you click on the plus under base here and click on color bar and it allows you to drag it off to the side. Let's see if this works now. I want to create a outline with coordinates. I'm going to go on map, tools, base map, draw base map. I leave all this um, as a default. I click next. Um, uh, you can go over here, I like using edge ticks, and let's see what it looks like. If I cl click next and I click finish, I think I'm going to get a lot of different things, because I think well, that's not too bad. Um, so a reminder that my coordinate system is in meters, so that's why I'm getting values like this. So as long as I click on my color bar on the left hand side, yeah, I could drag it out of the screen if I wanted to. Also, you can see my scale bar here. You might want to drag it down so it's not on the picture. There's also the north arrow. Oh, what happened to my scale bar? Um, is it being hidden? Um, let's see if we can find my scale bar. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, check that side. Maybe we just put it down at the bottom. You might not be happy with the size of it because the font is quite small, so I right click on it. I go edit, right click again, select all, right click text attributes. Again, I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And reminder, don't drag left and right with your scale bar, only drag up and down. I often take off the coordinates. And it's scale at the top, and I've got a lot of overlapping numbers here. So a useful scale now. Also, a reminder, my coordinates are a bit small, so I click on it here to select them. You can see once it's selected, it's got this dashed line. I go on top, I go edit, select all text attributes. Please let me know if there's a faster way to do it. Change it to size 4, and you can see I can see it a bit better now. Um, so yeah, here's a basic map on the screen. Um, I was going to just say... You could also go here to Map Tools Base Map. Instead of putting meters down, you can click Next and say take off this part of the coordinates and come down here to Lap Long and select Edge Ticks here. And so now it's going to take away the meters, but it's going to give you Lap Long. And um, you've just got to choose what you want your spacing to be. I didn't mention um, yeah earlier. It kind of set a default grid spacing, so I'm going to put 5, maybe I could also do a default, and so you can see it's actually now put it into degrees, which are too small, so we're going to make them bigger, 
and that's really a quick video on how to import a grid and that actually automatically turns it into a map. Um, you can see now, if I go to the left hand side here under grids, my grid is loaded under here, the original grid that's inside here, this data up here that I can switch on and off, but also under maps, this is the actual map you can see up here is the name of the map that's open.